Does making a PDF accessible sound overwhelming to you? It is hard to know how to get started and there's so many elements you have to juggle when you're first learning. I remember this feeling. Let me break it down for you. The first couple of things are things that you learn in design school and you are taught how to do these things and in reality, they're actually helping with accessibility. So one thing is making sure that your document has a logical reading order, meaning will I be able to follow the flow of the page without having to think about it? It is already just intuitively there and I know what I need to read next. And are you using heading styles like H1 and H2 to make it super easy for someone to understand the hierarchy of your document? This also increases the legibility and usage of your PDF. When you're creating a long document, do you create paragraph styles and character styles to ensure that your document is consistent? This can also save you so much time and you can also apply tags to these paragraph and character styles so that the tagging for accessibility is way more efficient at the end of the process. When you're creating lists, are you making them automatic or are you manually putting in the symbols or numbers? This is not gonna work for coding and it just makes it inconsistent. For example, if you decide to edit it and the numbers are off, that's not gonna work well for your users. Picking fonts is super important. You wanna make sure they're super legible and that they're a good font size. If someone can't read your document, there's nothing more frustrating than that. The next two are about images. Are you adding alt text or alternative text to your images so that someone who's using a screen reader would be able to know what the image says? You also want to make sure that you're not putting a bunch of images that aren't live text that have a bunch of words on it. That would be really frustrating to someone who can't visually see what is in those pictures. And it can be frustrating if it's low res and people can't read it regardless of their ability of seeing it visually. You're probably thinking to yourself, I've given you so much information already and I'm not even done. Well, you're in luck because I've created a free checklist that will help you when you're creating PDFs and you can get familiar with the things that are on the list. Learn how to do them one by one. You don't need to do everything all at once. Just do what you can and whatever you can do to increase the accessibility of your documents, people will be grateful for. And then over time, you can make them more and more accessible until they're fully accessible. So there is a link in my description below where you can put in your email and you'll be put on my email list and also get this free checklist. And then that way you can start using it when you're creating your PDFs. All right, let's get back to our list. The next thing we want to talk about is color. You need to be able to meet color contrast requirements, which I have a whole video on and I'll put in the description below so you can watch that video later if you need help with color contrast. And the second thing is you don't want to ever rely on color alone. You want to provide more than one way for someone to interact with something and not make it so they have to know what the color is in order to use it. So you can add symbols or labels or whatever to make it so that someone can use it and not have to rely just on that color. The next thing is links. So when you're putting a hyperlink in your document and you want it to be able to take you to a destination on the internet, you want to make sure that whatever you're labeling as your hyperlink makes sense by itself and you would be able to know exactly where that link is going to take you. You do not want to be vague. You don't want to say click here or that kind of thing. You want it to specifically say exactly where it will take it so that if someone's using a screen reader, they'll know exactly what they're clicking on and it doesn't feel sketchy because they're like, uh, it says there's a link, but I don't really want to click on this random link. You also want to make sure that visually your link is distinguishable among all the rest of your text. So a common way to do that is to make it blue and underlined. You don't have to do that system, but you do need a way. You need to make it really simple and easy so that someone knows that there's a link there. If you don't distinguish it, no one's going to know the link even exists. The next couple are for long documents. So if you have a document that's like three or plus sections in it, you would want to add a table of contents. Just use your best discretion. If the document's long and it's hard for you to scroll through and find exactly what you're wanting, then you're going to want to add a table of contents to make it easier for your users to be at the beginning and find where they want to go. And this way they can jump around and use the document in a way that is helpful for them instead of having to scroll through 
so many pages to figure out where in the world that little information is that they wanted to reference from last time that they looked at your document. Same for as the table of contents, you're also going to want to include bookmarks. This is where you can go and click on it and it's basically a table of contents within your PDF, but it makes it so it's more accessible when you're using the Adobe Acrobat or whatever platform you're using to jump from place to place when you're digitally using it. So traditionally a table of contents can be used for print or digital and bookmarks are basically just a way of making table of contents a digital form but you should include both if you have a digital document the rule of thumb that i personally use is if it's 10 pages or more i will most likely add bookmarks to my document the next thing we're going to talk about is tables so you want to make sure that you have headers for your columns and your rows to make it so that people understand what you're trying to say in your table. Tables can get super complex. So by adding headers, it really increases how someone's going to be able to interact with your table and understand the information on it. You really want to make sure that you set your table headers as a TH in the code so that someone who is using a screen reader will know when there's a table heading and that will really increase once again, how they interact with this table and digest the information in this complex thing. Please don't use a table unless it's actually meant to be a table. Don't just use it for formatting and helping you align things. There's a lot of tools you can use in these programs to help you do that and you don't need a table to do it. And it just makes it so it's really confusing for screen reader users and it will read it as a table when it's not actually and then it just won't work. So if you're doing a document that includes form fields, now this could include a text box you want people to write in, this could include radio buttons, this could include check boxes or drop down menus, you're going to want to make sure that these form fields are all labeled with a good descriptive of what they are. This will not only help people who are visually using it, it will give them a prompt of what you put in the description and help them know what you actually want them to put in that form field, but it will also help with the screen reader as well. To help with form fields, you really want to make sure you're explaining and having instructions before you're just putting a bunch of random form fields so that there's context for the user. When they're putting in form fields, you really want to make sure that it's clear what the form field is for. And the last thing for form fields is you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to the tab order so that it makes sense sequentially and throughout the document, if someone decides they want to just tab through those form fields, they'll be able to quickly and easily go through all the form fields and fill it out. If you don't fix the tab order, then it might do it. A form field here, a form field there, a form field here, and it's just gonna jump all around your document and it's gonna make zero sense to your user. Not what we want. The next thing on the checklist is to make sure that you're just using plain language and you're not using super complex words people don't use in their everyday language. If you have a specialty and there's terms that people typically would use for that, feel free to use those, but also keep in mind the beginner users who might not be familiar with those words. And you might want to consider putting a definition when that is warranted so that new people are comfortable and they know that they can understand what you're trying to say. We really don't want to be speaking cryptic language or else no one's going to want to read your document. Another related one is when you're using acronyms, you're going to want to spell out exactly what those acronyms mean the first time that you use them. Because even if you assume that every person on this planet knows exactly what an acronym is, turns out there's going to be someone who probably doesn't know what it is. So just put it on there, help someone out so that they can understand every other time you use that acronym. All right, the last two sections are things you need to do to make sure it works with assistive technology and just wrapping it all up, making sure that it works well for as many people as possible. So you're gonna wanna make sure you enter in metadata, meaning the title and a description, you can put the author, and you wanna make sure that you set the language that the document is in so that the screen reader knows which dictionary to be pulling from when the screen reader is reading it. You're gonna wanna clean up your text panel, you're gonna wanna fix your reading orders, hang in there. Some of these are very complex and you can do the basics and then build on it like I was saying earlier, stick with me. We're gonna build upon this and I'm gonna be creating more videos to help you go over specific things on this checklist. This is just an overview, so just hang in there. Just little improvements right now, focus on that. 
you're going to want to provide closed captions and transcripts for any media that you're using within the document. So if you're linking to a video that you're using somewhere else on your website, you want to make sure that that video has captions on it. So someone who is hard of hearing or can't be listening to the document at the time has a way to watch that video without hearing it. You're also going to want to make sure that this document works with a keyboard only. So not assuming that you would have to use a mouse to navigate around the document and click on things. And I think most importantly, at the end, you're going to want to test it. You're going to want to put it in a screen reader, run through it as if you were using a screen reader yourself and see how you can improve the document to make it more accessible. So if there's something that doesn't make sense to you, it's not going to make sense to someone who's using a screen reader. So put it in, use it as someone who's using a screen reader, make yourself a screen reader user. And then that way you can make sure that it works for a screen reader user. That's definitely one that is complex and I can share more information about it in the future. You'll also want to use the built-in accessibility checker in Adobe Acrobat to make sure you're checking for errors that are happening and these are based on the laws so if you check those and you make sure that you pass all of those then you're going to be in pretty good shape. And last but not least, and maybe even one of the most important, is to put this document in front of your users, see if you can find someone who has a disability, and ask them to run through your document and give feedback on how you can improve it in future documents and the one that you had them review. That way you'll know what issues are arising and how you can improve upon it in the future. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not your specific accessibility specialist, so I can't guarantee that if you follow this checklist that your things will be accessible, but you will be in a really good place for getting that checked and ensuring that it's accessible. Once again, I know this is a lot of information, especially if you're getting started. Just remember, do one thing at a time and build upon it but I want to make sure that people have the information they need. So don't forget to go get the free checklist and then you'll have a list of things that you can start learning and building upon so that you can start making your PDFs more accessible. Make sure to subscribe to my channel below because I will definitely be covering all of these things more in depth in future videos. Until then, I think you should go check out this video all about color contrast. Bye!